Assalamu alaikum. Welcome. Happy Juneteenth, everybody. It's Nia. Um, we're going live today, as promised, with a special guest, Binta Jallo. Today we are talking about marriage and courtship and dating and all those controversial topics <laughs> that us Muslims like to talk about. Um, but first, let me give you a brief intro for all of you who don't know who BMG Fly is. We are a nonprofit organization founded in 2018 with the purpose of uplifting and empowering Black and Muslim girls and women. And that's what we do here. So uh, we are uh, being visited by Binta. Uh, the Bring a Friend Shy big event that's coming up in a month. And there she is. Welcome. Hey, you know what? I, I got a new selfie stick and I'm trying to figure this out. Awesome. So I feel like this is perfect here. So just give me one second. Cool. I think it's working. <laughs> I'm never as uh, tech savvy as I would like to be, but you know, we learn on the curve. So just for everyone who is not familiar with BMG Fly, um, this organization is meant to empower and uplift Black and Muslim women and girls. And one of the things that a lot of us, I mean, I'm speaking from my own experience when I say this, um, feel disempowered is when it comes to relationships, dating, and marriage. And as somebody personally who's been married twice, um, I've learned a lot that I can share um just as one of those like you know this is what happened and you know just so you can avoid this <laughs> um but also i can also give some positive insight because not every experience has been negative so um and binta will let you know a little bit more about her background as well um because some of you i know are probably going to be like well what do y'all know about uh marriage and dating and whatnot yeah so that's my uh qualifications as someone who's reached the 50th year of living alhamdulillah i've experienced a lot <laughs> but go ahead binta oh we, we can't hear you hello you can you hear me yes alhamdulillah okay, okay great mashallah um so yeah peace and blessings everyone uh, my name is binta it's so um you know an honor to spend this time with you all. I'm so grateful. Um, I've been a fan of Black Boston Girl Fly for a really long time. Um, and yeah, like I'm looking forward to this conversation for sure. Um, primarily the purpose is, you know, to, to spread some advice to people that are looking um, and, you know, that are seeking righteous spouses and, you know, to get into that conversation. So thank you all so much for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and when you came to me with this idea, I thought that's so perfect because as black Muslim women and girls, we tend to have this idea in our minds of what's expected of us when it comes to things like this. You know, mm -hmm. I know a lot of times I'm going to be speaking from my own experience, you know, growing up black and Muslim in America, coming up in the 80s and the 90s as a teenager is a lot different than what it is nowadays. But um, things pretty much have stayed the same, kind of, you know. <laughs> yeah, honestly, um, I literally did not know um, how intriguing of a journey this would be for me. Um, and, and honestly, I, I can't recall how it was, um, you know, back in the 80s and, you know, the 90s, because I was still a kid. Um, I was born in 1990. Um, but it's really sad to hear that it hasn't shifted much, honestly. <laughs> the conversations that I'm seeing online, like these same conversations were happening back then. And um, I was in high school in 1991 mm -hmm. and I wasn't thinking about um, being married and having kids until I felt the pressure of my community. You know, I had these big hopes and dreams of like what I wanted to do with my life. And I felt like I wanted to make a big impact culturally. I wanted to be a writer. Um, I had this idea in high school that I was going to be like the Mus the black Muslim Oprah. And mashallah, like who knew that that's ultimately kind of what I'm doing right now. It's kind of weird. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> that, but but, you know, once I felt the pressure from my community of, oh, no, you have to settle down and um, get married and have kids, 
it felt like this tug of war between my identity and what I was expected to do. Mm -hmm. And I still see that going on. Like some of the posts in the comments that people are, are talking about, they're like, you know, I have to be a certain kind of Muslima to like attract the right kind of spouse. And, you know, um, you know, if you're career focused, um, then you're not like a good potential wife. And those kinds of comments are like, mm, why are we still having that conversation? Because you can do both. Yeah. You can actually do both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you truly can. And, you know, I am a testament to witnessing my mother um, do both as a black Muslim woman um, that was born and raised in the Gambia and Senegal. And, you know, witnessing her being able to like cook and clean for her family and then have her husband and work and, you know, do all these things and then, you know, move to America and everything. And so it, it is possible. You definitely can do both. And I, I think what um, the issue that I'm running into is at least you know, actually, let me not call it an issue. Allah has not written it for me yet. But so far, what, what I've witnessed is that um, due to the fact that I am educated and that I'm like a darker skinned woman, that I, you know, alhamdulillah, have these, all these accolades, a lot of men are either like intimidated by me and they've like point blank say, said that. Um, or it's, you know, this thing about me being like too pushy. Um, and I think it's, it's, you know, a story that unfortunately a lot of us have where we, we've worked so hard to take care of ourselves, take care of our families, to heal and do like the inner work on ourselves, um, you know, go to school, get our careers. Um, and then by the time we finish all of that, we're, we find ourselves at, you know, 30, 33 years old and still kind of like waiting around, you know, and I don't think that it has anything to do with age. It really is just dependent upon Allah's qadr and like what he wrote for you. Um, but it is difficult, you know, just especially dealing with, um, you know, we can't hear you now. Binta. Oh, yeah, there we go. Gotcha. I can. Hear you. Okay, is there like a little lag or can you still hear me properly? No, we're good. Okay. Now. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so one of the things I've been doing for my mental health is to put a timer on my Instagram. Um, yeah. And that's been pretty helpful. So that that was just a reminder for me. Um, but um, what was I saying? So so yes, yeah, so, um, you know, you, you get to this point where, you know, you are ready for companionship and you are ready to seek um, properly. But um, in the meantime, you know, there's there's men that are still not ready or they, they feel like, you know, they, they don't want to be on the same um, mindset, like scope as you are. Yeah, that's the issue. Like there's no reciprocity when it comes to being on par. It's like, you've done all this work on yourself. You've worked really much um, on your healing. Um, you are ready, you are at that place, but there isn't anyone that's at that same level because you know, it's mismatched. And it's like, well, how do we overcome that? Like, how do we find those folks who are on the same level? It's really difficult. And unfortunately, there's too much of uh, people who aren't honest with themselves, you know, they've kind of convinced themselves, oh, I'm ready, I'm good. Like, yeah. But the proof is in the pudding, because when you show up, the insecurities come out, you know, like you were saying, you know, some men even will go for go as far as to say, mm, I'm a little bit intimidated by you, which is smart, because like, you don't want anybody wasting your time, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, truly. And, you know, um, I, it, it's just really heartbreaking, because I, you know, I have a lot of friends that are in their like mid 30s or early 20s, and, you know, even 40s, and they're, they're still, you know, looking and, and waiting to see what is next for them um, and meaning, you know, wanting to have kids and have our parents, you know, witness that while they're still here on this earth, inshallah. And so um, it is it is interesting just witnessing the perspectives versus the, the women versus the men, you know, in that way. Um, and so 
in 2020, my friend and I were actually intentionally looking and uh, this was around the era of Love is Blind. And like when that first, first popped off and it was just such a like monumental moment on Netflix TV. Um, and I, I didn't watch it for a while because I, I was just like, eh, I don't know if I'm really interested in this. But when I finally did watch it, um, I was just thinking with my friend and we were just, you know, contemplating on the fact that there's no Muslims on this show. Like, what does that look like? Um, and so given all the time that we had working from home and doing all these things, we decided to put together um, a matchmaking uh, event online on Zoom. And it was called um, I Meet Soul. And the purpose of it was for it to be a uh, Muslim matchmaking event that was on Zoom, a sight unseen, similarly to the show, so no one could see each other. Um, and people met over the course of five days. I believe we had about um, 10 men and, tw and 10 women, the first iteration that we did. And one of the couples actually ended up getting married after that. Uh, so it was really, really beautiful, you know, and I feel like we've had to um, go out of our own way to create these platforms for people and, you know, help people to be able to find who they're looking for. And I'm very grateful for that. Um, and so that's kind of where this next iteration of, uh, of an, an event came to me, which is uh, the event that I'm doing on July 19th, uh, Bring a Friend Shy. And so this event in particular, I'm, I'm really praying that there will be like-minded people there. Because I think that's the issue is that there's a lot of people that might not necessarily be ready to be married, you know, tomorrow. And, you know, I'm definitely not, but like married to, you know, ready to be married tomorrow or within, you know, a couple of months. But at least they are moving with intention. They're moving with like righteousness and they're moving with, um, you know, uh, honesty and, and letting people know that you know they do aim to get married they do want to marry someone that is righteous and they're they're looking for that um, and they're not here to you know play around with people's hearts yeah I'm really curious um, I want I see so many cool folks in the chat I would love to get their questions their comments like what is it that's the biggest challenge for you when it comes to finding the right person because if you have something that's really like pressing and you could benefit from some advice, I definitely want to be able to share that with you. But also, like, what's the biggest thing that's like the most profound or most prolific thing that's plaguing our community right now? Mm -hmm. <sighs> SubhanAllah. Honestly, you know, one of my favorite chefs, uh, Sheikh Ubaidullah Evans, um, he mentioned this in one of the classes that we took um, some months ago at a class that I go to that he teaches at a mosque. And he was saying that, you know, and I'm paraphrasing, but he was saying that um, there is essentially like a, a marriage epidemic in, in our community. And I'm not really sure what the answer to that is, but I do know, you know, speaking personally, the last couple of men that I had uh, entertained or even just given the time of day either have just like, you know, not been ready or um, they, you know, for some reason, I'm like the person right before they end up finding someone. And what, that's very painful, you know, it, it, it's not, um, it's not an uncommon story. So I think one of the issues is, you know, there's this age gap thing where men feel for some reason, I'm not speaking for all men, but from what I've witnessed, you know, they prefer women that are a little bit younger or um, women that don't make as much money as them um, or, you know, women that are, mm, dare I say, like a little less religious than they are because they don't want to be judged, you know? And so, I think that there is a variety of reasons, but um, speaking for myself, I think that, you know, like you said, like you learn so much about yourself while you're in these courting moments and getting to know people. And I know that certain triggers that I have um, that people would, oh, no. you know, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, you're back. You froze. Oh. Now you're back. Oh, no. Okay. And have I been freezing this whole time? Or are we good? No. That just the one time it happened so sorry but no you're right um there's folks in the chat who are saying that's their same experience so you're on the right you like you're on the right track with this you know yeah and and i'm so sorry to anyone else who has experienced this and you know I just wrote a piece about this um, referring to just like, you know, discernment and, and love and blind spots. And um, I think that one of the most dangerous things that we can do is um, 
give our our hearts fully to an individual um because we know that our lord you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only entity that should be taking um that much space within our heart and i truly believe that when we start to even if it's unintentionally start to um replace some of the space that Allah is supposed to take in our heart um, by way of like ruminating on like, oh my God, we're gonna get married, we're gonna have this kid, we're gonna, you know, like just starting these stories and putting people on pedestals, it can really cause um, a tarnish a tarnished heart like it can it can cause pain it can cause um you know black dots to develop on our hearts it can it can you know it can really turn you blind it can really turn you blind and we know you know in the in the quran allah talks about people that are deaf dumb and blind and honestly i'm definitely a, a hopeful romantic but i do feel like if we're not careful the way that we're um considering love and getting closer to people for the sake of marriage we can start to misconstrue things yeah. and um unfortunately that can lead to so many blind spots as people you know always say love is blinding or you know like you have these rose colored glasses but it really is a spiritual thing that we are combating um you know if you're not careful if you're not mindful of purifying your heart you can start to see things um, from a human perspective, which is, you know, the only perspective we really have, but what you want to see things through is like what Allah wants for you. You know what I mean? And I know for me personally, um, you know, I would just get so invested because I, I would want to pour what I would want into myself into someone else. And unfortunately that can pull away from so many things. And that's the lesson that I personally had to learn that, um, you know, I just yearn for others not to have to go through it in that way. But I think some of us are just so sensitive when it comes to getting to know people. And um, we want to show, you know, so badly how, how much love we can offer the world or offer that person. And in return, um, you know, it, it unfortunately is it is um, depleting our cups. And so I'm working on sharing as much as I can without depletion. Um, and also just, um, you know, just being mindful, like, you know, sometimes we, we do lose ourselves in this in these situations. And that's why you have to be very, very, very careful with your heart and very careful um, to like do your dhikr, to, to read Quran, to tell Allah what you want, um, you know, uh, praying to Hajjad, all of these things. And, you know, I'm one of those people where I, I just dive head first and I'm, I'm so excited when it comes to getting to know people. And my friends are, they know that about me, right? So they're, they're gonna listen to my stories about like yeah it's the one that's it like you know but then they'll they'll wait for the moment where i'm like yeah girl it ain't work, it ain't work out <laughs> you know um so yeah so yeah no i i will share with you so the two experiences that i've had i got married when i was 18 which was what i was just referring to earlier in our conversation where i was under the impression of that this is what I needed to do you know this was it was like a career it was just like you know the idea that i wanted to become um a writer was was one career becoming a wife and mother was the other career so i had to like mm -hmm. make a, make a choice you know and so that was what i was under the impression of so this was my career i wanted to be a good wife and a good mother and i was 18 and i was just so gung-ho of being like this is you know i'm gonna like you said, go all in and just give it my all and put my heart into it. Um, but what I didn't realize was that I didn't really know myself as much as I thought I did, you know, and at 18, you really don't, you know, you think you do, you mm -hmm. think you know yourself very well, but you haven't really been exposed to different experiences so that you can understand who you are in those di different situations. And so mm -hmm. I had to learn things on the fly about who I was growing up into this adult person while also trying to balance a relationship with someone who was slightly older than me, but, you know, at a different level of faith and a different, we were different people, even though our goal was to have a good marriage and, you know, raise a family. But unfortunately, you can't really know who you are at that age. And I'm just, like I said, I'm speaking from my own experience. So the lesson that I learned from that situation is that no matter what relationship you are in, whether it's marriage or a friendship 
or whatever a partnership in business you really have to be solid in who you are and be confident in your relationship with your creator so like you were talking about you have to know that that space in your heart is a hundred percent for allah you know everything mm -hmm. else is extra like it's it's the run the runneth over of the cup the cup is allah mm -hmm. everything that runs over like that's extra that's the rest of the folks mm -hmm. that are in your life and mm -hmm. That's something that I, I had to learn the hard way, but I really wish somebody would have been like, mm, let me tell you something, Nia. So I'm here mm -hmm. to let y'all know, mm -hmm. if you aren't solid in your relationship with your creator and solid with who you are and how you behave in situations with regard to like what you're willing to accept and what you tolerate versus, you know, what makes you happy you know you need to know all of that before you put yourself into a situation where you're giving over your everything to this person it's not going to work out well because you've lost yourself mm -hmm. and so that's the biggest lesson before you even step into wanting to partner up with someone just really be solid in your relationship with with Allah and with who you are and know yourself and be your biggest fan and like you're you know you, everyone else in your life is extra like i keep thinking back to this video i saw of eartha kid and she's like you know why would i compromise you're being <laughs> you're a, you're an extra in my life like you you're coming into my life and adding more so no i'm not going to compromise who i and she's right she's mm -hmm. absolutely she's absolutely mm -hmm. right you don't want to compromise who you are and sacrifice very like key parts of yourself just to accommodate someone else. And if you're being put in that situation, then that person is not the right person for you. Yeah, yeah it's, it's so true. I love that quote and that video um, of her so much. And I, I used to like reference it really frequently. So thank you for reminding me of it. Um, yeah. SubhanAllah, yeah, it's, it's just, um, I, I think about all these instances I have that I, I, I'm wondering, like, if somebody were to give me that advice, would, ha would I have actually listened? You know what I mean? Like, right. because, you know, we're young, we're, we're exploring, we're trying to figure out what we like, what we don't like, and all these things. And, um, you know, it's difficult because also, you know, Islamically, we have to do things a certain way. And like, you don't want to lose yourself. And you also you want to be mindful of like timelines and things like that. And I know everybody is on different timelines. Everybody's on different type of time. Um, and you know, for me personally, I just want to do things like properly. And so like, I thought that it has to be a certain type of way. And I would bring that up to the, you know, the people um, and they just were not on that. And like, it just, it's scary, you know, like it, you're just like, well, we got to wait a minute. Like we got to get married in six months. What do you mean? Like type of thing. <laughs> and I'm not saying that has to be everybody's vibe, but I, you know, I'm still learning exactly what I need to do. I'm not on that type of time anymore in that way, but it's hard to, um come out of that when you already like have expressed that to someone and then they don't believe you well, like after you're like actually you know i i'm at, i am chilling now like like let's kind of just kind of see um but like do things you know properly and so um you know that that that's kind of a little bit difficult too like you have to make sure that you all are on the same type of timeline you all are on the same wavelength um and you're just doing things properly like I'm, I'm grown now like i'm literally i'm not 18 i'm not 20 you know i'm 33 years old and you know i know that that um is a beautiful age you know like mashallah so the year that we, the age will be in jannah inshallah and um i've, I've been praying for allah SWT to make this one of my most beautiful years but you know there is growth with beauty you know there there is um there's the growing pains when when you have to deal with like evolving and when you're learning about yourself and it's not easy to tap into um, what you need to heal all the time and like and you don't want to always be the person that is constantly the healer in your family or the the healer you know for your for your community or whatever it is and for me personally I, I work in a really really extroverted role um, in my community but I'm very introverted like I, I know people don't believe me when I say that but I, I love my downtime and I love you know being at home and recharging in that way and I can show up for sure in an extroverted way but um, when it comes to 
men or like getting to know men in particular, I'm very, very guarded. Like, I, and I think that that's one thing that, um, you know, I'm praying that this event that we do on July 19th will help people um, that are similar to me and others that um, are a little bit nervous, like to get to know, you know, like the opposite um, sex and all of those things. And like, they're just, you know, they're comfortable. They're, they're bringing their friend with them. They get to know people in a, in a nice chill environment um and you know a lot of these singles events they're always mad awkward like they're they're so awkward and you know i i applaud them so much for even doing it because it is very difficult within the muslim community because everybody practices so differently um you know and so um, i think with this what we're trying to do is or what we will do is um, appease as many people as we can, but also allow people to feel, you know, comfortable and safe in an environment where they don't feel like it's like too cringy or anything like that. Um, and I pray that, that that's how it turns out. And I would love to also see it become very multicultural. And, you know, typically when I go to these events, it's one off, like I'll probably see one or two other people that look like me and everyone else is you know from the suburbs no offense to the suburbs folks but um it, it isn't representative of like what chicago looks like to me at least i feel you so let's talk about that so like versus being 18 and having your parents help set you up you know this is very different so fast forward to adulthood you know, meeting the right person happens in a whole different environment and the parameters are totally different and you have a lot more autonomy. And like you said, the guidelines of Islam are your guardrails. But at the same time, how are you going to meet the right person if you don't quote unquote date? So there's like this controversy of like, what's what's halal dating, you know, but let's talk about how you want it set up ideally with your event it's speed dating which mm -hmm. we all know what speed dating is you get to sit down you talk with somebody for a few minutes and then mm -hmm. ding the bell rings and you rotate to the next person mm -hmm. but how is this different and how is it um set up so that it's um along the lines of you know islam and so everybody feels comfortable like you said talk a little bit more about that yeah for sure you know it's difficult um you know and allah protect me i i really have the intention to have it feel wholesome but but like chill at the same time and not too stuffy and not too um for lack of better words just like separated <laughs> like I don't, I don't know how else to explain it but yeah. um inshallah uh, people will be able to come and we we chose a really intentional space that is in the inner city. It's called Haas Room. Um, it's in Pilsen, which is a very diverse location. And they are essentially a art gallery and it's black owned and it's super dope. And so my vision is that people arrive, they have some light bites, they have some like, you know, halal drinks, and I know, you know, other stuff. And um, they, you know, get to know other people while they're there kind of mingling, view the art for a little bit, view the gallery, and then um, we actually got sponsored, alhamdulillah, by um, the Digital Sisterhood. Nice. And so they um, they gave us these uh, guide decks. I'm actually going to grab one. Give me one second to show you I, all. Yeah, because getting to know somebody um, in the secular world is very different from in the Islamic world, so to yes. speak. So there are some people who are like, no, separation of genders. And you know all the men on this side and all the women on that side, but it's like really is, is that really organic? Like, <laughs> so what you're saying is that you're giving everybody the opportunity to mingle without the stuffiness and also respecting boundaries. Yes, of course, because the space is not that big. But there's like there's a beautiful gallery when you first enter, and then there's like this outdoors beautiful patio and everything. So literally, it, it's creating. Um, it's creating vulnerability, but also in a in a um, open space, and also like you know, it's allowing for accountability. So really, everybody can see everybody. So no craziness should be should be happening, you know. Um, so we're 
<laughs> exactly. No shenanigans. Like we're able to hold each other accountable. We're able to, you know, enjoy each other's company. Um, people are able to, you know, just be adults in adult space and, and be there for the center reason. Um, and one of the main things, you know, that goes along with being righteous is, is giving back to the community and looking forward to um, sharing the resources that we have to be able to uplift injustices that are or injustices that are happening in the world. Um, so actually 50 percent of the uh, proceeds are going to be going towards Sudan, Congo, and Palestine. And so um, I'm not really making money from this. It's really primarily just to do something where I can, you know, help people find, you know, either a new friend or a potential spouse or just someone that um, that vibes and they're on the same wavelength, if that makes sense. Like we're, we're on, we're equal footing when it comes to how we think about life. And, you know, obviously people think about, you know, different things in different ways, but I think that for the most part, people will be able to be centered around the fact that we care about humanity and that we care about ourselves, we care about our Dean, um, and we and we want to do that in an, a, the most appropriate way as possible. Um, so these are the vibe decks. Um, so y'all should please go check them out. It's called the Digital Sisterhood. They're one of the number one podcasts in the world about um, uh, self-improvement and, and health, and they're all Muslim women. I believe they're UK-based. And so they donated a few of these decks that have um, 135 prompts there and so we are going to be utilizing these during the speed courting portion um, giving people you know opportunities to get to know each other but not in an awkward way um, you know not doing like a bingo or something like that like literally just say come talk to people like people you know sit down at this table you can switch from time to time and then we'll have a moment to mingle and that's really it like I don't think that there's enough spaces that offer opportunities like that um and so I, i'm praying that that it goes well inshallah. yeah it's so important to have the opportunity to just be yourself and unpretentious self you know yes. and like you said you use the word vulnerable which is so important because alhamdulillah when you meet the right person you have to be able to connect on an organic level so mm -hmm. if you have similar vibe like that deck says vibe check you mm -hmm. have the same vibe then then you'll click but you can't click if you're just being somebody else if you're just exactly. putting on this front to attract the right person you really have to be confident in yourself to be mm -hmm. your own self and be mm -hmm. okay with that you know yes that way you'll find the right you'll, you'll find the right yeah. person the yes. so thank yeah. you Rian. yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. And yeah, that, that's the thing that I'm learning on my own self-care journey and, you know, healing journey is that people show up with their representatives. They don't show yep. up with who they are. And my, myself included, like nobody wants to look crazy. Nobody want, want to look like, you know, oh, no one wants to be with me because I act like this. But the truth of the matter is, when you show up as yourself, the person that you are meant to be with and meant to attract is going to appreciate those um, attributes that you have. So if you're a loud sister, somebody might want a loud sister. If you're a quiet sister, somebody might want a loud a quiet sister. And it's not even about like who wants what. It's about what do you want. Like that's what I what I'm learning too as I get older is what type of person do I want? Like you know what what type of values do do i look forward to and it's really important to read as well there's some books um that talk about you know getting married and like you know finding the right spouse are you ready to get married like those types of things and you know there's there's so much to do especially as women like we're always somebody something like we're, we're somebody's student somebody's teacher somebody's daughter somebody's mom um like rarely do we get the opportunity to just be like ourselves and one of the books that i was reading um a couple like not long ago is by the sister named alex l and she's amazing um it's called um uh, man what is it called I'm I think it's called How, How We Heal, How We yeah. Heal. Um, and, you know, I went to one of her book tours in Chicago and she mentioned this question. She said, like, who are you outside of your roles to everyone else? Like, who are just you? And so um, I had to really sit with that question and realize, like, yeah, who am I? Who do I want to be? What what do I want to look like? What do I want my life to look like? Because we're only here for a very, very short period of time. Like, we don't have time to be messing around, you know, just being with anybody. Like, And, and then also, it's really important because it's like, these people, God willing, are going to be our children's 
like mothers and fathers so you want to be mindful you you have the right to choose these people but your children do not have the right to pick who their parents are so it really we're thinking about progeny here we're thinking about like you know people that are coming after us and developing the ummah developing our our communities and it's really really important and like you know i know that i personally have a very um silly side to me i can i can be a little bit like immature but immaturity looks different to other people and i'm okay with that like i i totally own that you know and um i'm just like okay who is who is my same level of weird or who is like a little bit less weird than me and i'm okay with that you know what i mean because nobody's perfect exactly it's so funny because <laughs> honestly the first thing that popped up to my mind is <laughs> i know some of y'all are going to jump on me for this but it's like like tinashe said who's going to match my freak you know <laughs> you've got to find the right person and you have to be aware that it's okay to be who you are like too many of us are like you said sending out this representative who's not even who you really are so not only are you doing a disservice to the other person but you really are doing a disservice to yourself yes you're wasting your time you're wasting their time you just got to be comfortable with who you are mm -hmm. and that takes a lot of healing it takes a mm -hmm. lot of work it takes a lot of making sure that you put yourself first and i'm speaking to the women here first because so many of us as black muslim women put everybody else first and if you're an eldest daughter like i am that's been your career for your entire life so you have to take a step back and say listen um no i need to assess what i think i need and just yeah. like step into this situation where i'm okay with being myself mm -hmm. and whomever that i attract understand that that's who Allah put into my circle because that's you know that's like the orbit that i'm attracting with who i am honestly yes truly thank you so much for sharing that um and you know what I, i'm actually creating a presentation for the black muslim psychology conference um that is going to be taking place in chicago the day after my event so july 20th to the 22nd and my workshop is going to be centered around cultivating your inner home so the the theme of this year for the conference is is home and you know what does that look like in different spaces and you know, I'm, I'm thinking about the fact that, you know, for me personally, like, I've had to take moments where I literally just did not talk to anybody. I, I tapped into my art. I, I wrote, I sing, I screamed. I, I took time away from, from work. I, um, you know, went to museums. Like I had to do things to take care of myself so that I could be like mentally well after, um, you know, having to deal with like heartbreak. And um, a lot of people don't have access to those tools and they don't know how, what it takes to, um, to properly cultivate your inner home like what does that mean and there was this one girl i wish i could remember her name um i follow her on instagram but she made a post about being mentally well and happy and she was saying that you know her mind is a um, safe space for her and i never heard that before and i it just, it's so simple but it, it should be true for all of us like our minds should not be a place of manipulation mm -hmm. they should not be a place of like self-harm they shouldn't be a place of um you know deniability like they, they should be straight um you know and taking care of us like we we own we don't own our bodies but like we we do have ownership over pushing out the thoughts that are coming in and out which is like mindfulness and that that's so important and i really try to remember that myself especially while i'm dealing with you know getting to know people um because it's not easy like and low-key like i was recently um like ghosted by somebody and um like my friend was like that never happened to me before so i, I was just like wait what is this like this, this is a little weird um and my my friend it's my friend was like what'd you say it's insane security yeah. they're not brave enough exactly that's exactly what yeah. my friend said she said no, no 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 she was like rephrase your mind like rephrase your thinking mm -hmm. Re reframe that it was them being insecure it's them okay. not being mature enough to like respond to you yeah. and i was like yeah you're right like i i'm i think i'm done with the days of 
thinking, you know, what did I do wrong? What could I have done better? How can I show up? And, you know, it's embarrassing. Like when you have to think about yourself in that way and then, you know, you might lose yourself so much to like, unfortunately this happens to me. I'm sharing because I don't want it to happen to anyone else. But like, I'm literally asking men, like, what did I do? Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, uh we're not doing that in 2024. We're not doing that anymore. You know what I mean? And um, it's, it's not okay like we literally we need to nurture ourselves nurture our minds and this is not something that's new i think it's just me personally because i haven't really been um you know exploring getting to know people as long as others have it, this is new to me and so i'm just being vulnerable and sharing the fact that like i'm learning the hard way and like we don't want others to have to learn that way. And now I'm finally, you know, like, much about putting my foot down and saying like, oh no, like I am the one that is needing, um, you know, to get myself together. And when I have myself together, you're more than welcome to join me. Like if, if you're taking care of yourself, but I'm not going to be like chasing anybody. Exactly. But you're right about cultivating that space you are your first safe space and it's not fair to the rest of the world to expect someone else to create that safe space for exactly. you you are the owner like i i totally respect what what the girl said about her mind being her safe space because i have a similar um idea like the way that i live my life is my heart is my safe mm -hmm. space like mm -hmm. i hold so much i'm one of those people that has so much to give and so much emotion and love but i have to make it so that that first level of it is for me otherwise i would give it all away and mm -hmm. i'd be left with nothing and so you have to make it that you are your first safe space and like you were saying earlier, Allah is there to fill those spaces yeah. and everything else is extra. And if you are in a situation where you're meeting someone who is being welcomed into your life, you are already whole. Mm -hmm. They're not making you mm -hmm. whole. You are making them whole. You're coming together in a partnership to share your experiences with one another, not to create this whole new life, if that makes sense. Yeah. And that's something. I had to learn in my second iteration. So like we talked about, you know, when I was 18 and I had to learn, you know, understanding myself was more important than trying to like make this relationship. But also when I was in my late thirties, um, like almost 40 actually, like past 33, I was probably like 37. I, you know, had the opportunity to have another relationship. And here I was thinking, I'm not gonna make the same mistakes. However, I made different mistakes where I wasn't able to set that that boundary of this is my safe space for myself mm -hmm. first. And so you have to make sure that you are whole and that what the other person does, it's not about you. You have to remember that. It's about something that they haven't fixed or healed within themselves that your behavior or your presence has triggered and it could be a positive thing. You know, if you're growing together, that's definitely a benefit for having a relationship because you see something in that other person that helps you to heal yourself. Because otherwise, you you may not necessarily see that in a different situation. So that's a good thing. But if the person um, is rejecting you or you are rejecting that person or it just comes up as like something that you are fighting, then it's not beneficial and so there's no way that that would work you have to be open to healing and you have to be open to making sure that these boundaries are set like you are a whole person outside of this relationship mm -hmm. and whatever's happening in this situation it's not necessarily a fault of your own so like you were saying like why did this person ghost me it, it had nothing to do with you <laughs> it was like that person's problem yeah. they didn't know how to be brave enough to have a communication where they're like honest so yeah, yeah. you know that it was so funny to me i'm just like masha they seem like a dope person you know and they i'm sure they are i'm sure they're amazing but it's just i will never understand i'm so interested in in you know human psychology and just like how we move and i always no matter how you know someone treats me i always kind of look at their perspective to try to truly understand because i'm just kind of like 
there's no way you're just like that. Like, there, what happened? You know what I mean? And um, one, one of my dear friends, um, Maimuna, she, she had said this in one of her classes that, you know, she learned that if people talk to you crazy, they're not talking to you. Like, they're literally talking to their trauma or they're talking to um, whomever bothered them, whoever did that to them. And so just try to, you know, just say bismillah and like, you know, shield it as, as much as you can. Um, and so that that's what I've been being mindful of. And like, honestly, the fact that he just didn't respond, that's on him. Like, it, it's okay. Like, literally, and you know, it, it's an answer dua because Allah knows what I'm praying for. And I, I think that's the thing we need to remember. And that's mm -hmm. one thing that I've been um, very mindful of is learning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names. And yeah. One of the yeah. most beautiful names that uh, that has been sitting with me is Al Fatah, the opener. And you know, he opens so many beautiful doors. And if we truly trust and believe that Allah is Al Fatah, Allah is Al Mujib, Allah is like you know Al Wadud, yeah. He is going to be those things. Like we we want Him. You know, He is as we think of Him. And so that that I know to be true. And so with all this heartbreak and all these, you know, situations that I go through with these these men, I, I realize that um, it's just because that is what Allah wrote for me. And like, he wants something else for me. It's not necessarily, um, you know, exactly what I thought it was going to be, but it's going to be better. You know what I mean? And because he has the ultimate plan. And, you know, um, it is difficult to, to sit with sometimes because like, you're so ready to want, you know, what you want right at that time <laughs> um and and we have to realize that it has to be in the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants it to be and so that's one thing that i've been working on and um you know sometimes we, we got to be par uh, careful to ask for things with ease because even when i was using you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names al wadud al fatah al mujib the, they're very powerful like they're all these names are extremely powerful beyond our human capacity to understand and um you know he will answer you he will thoroughly answer you and unfortunately sometimes it is going to be excru excruciatingly painful you know especially because if your heart is attached to the words that you're saying like for example um i will never forget this and allah forgive me i, I take this away that i said this but my friend was asking me about getting to know this other guy while I was like, you know, really, really invested in this one dude. And I was like, no, like, you know where my heart is at. I will never say that again. Like, cause my heart is not with this man. It's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know what I mean? So like every single, that's one thing that, you know, dear village auntie always says is like, every single word you say is a dua. And so you have to be mindful of that. And I know this, you know, like we, we're all extremely intelligent women, extremely intelligent people. Um, that's why we're like, you know, black Muslim and, and fly, you know, because like Allah blessed us with these amazing gifts and we have to listen to our discernment. And, you know, sometimes we push it so down and that's why we have all these issues like in our gut and issues with our with our health and issues with our, you know, mental capacity because like we're thinking about the wrong things and it turns into like a physical illness or a mental illness instead of you know turning to the one that can um help us avoid these things you know and so that's one thing that i realized um in planning this event i'm, I'm really just praying that people come with an allah centered mindset and people come with um uh, a removal of any jaded behavior that they have about men and about women, regardless of whatever has happened in our lives, there is still, um, there's still someone out there that Allah has for us that we're meant to guide and they're meant to guide us. And like, we have to trust that it's still beautiful. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I will never treat someone poorly based off of how someone else has treated me. You know what I right. mean? Yeah, and, exactly. and I think I think that sometimes like we can show up to spaces feeling so hardened, and that's the last thing that we need. We don't need more hardened hearts in the world. Like we we need more softened hearts. We need more of the lovers. We need need more of the artists and the writers and the storytellers and the people are, that are going to share the story of of love and share the story of um of healing. And to do that, we have to truly work on ourselves, and and that's it. That's one of the biggest things that I like impress upon folks is that you have to really listen to the story of
what Allah is trying to tell you. Like you center Allah, you decenter everything else and always work on recentering Allah every single time because it's so easy, so easy for others to get in in that Venn diagram, so to speak, but you have to make it so that Allah is the center of everything. And one of the things that I learned from my second marriage was that Allah dude, like you said, Allah is the source of all love, is that no matter what relationship, no matter where the love is coming from, no matter who that vessel of love is, it's ultimately Allah's love for me. And it's not this person, you, if mm -hmm. that makes sense to you. Um, I say that because sometimes we get so enamored with the exterior like we get enamored with what is quote unquote supposed to be and we lose sight of the core essence of what it is and when you're in a relationship with someone you have to remember the source of all of it is allah it's mm -hmm. all allah you mm -hmm. know that way you're not caught up in the the whole idea of these the people you know and like you were saying earlier in our conversation we tend to get I'm caught up in oh we want to make this work and like this person is my person and you know that sounds really nice and there are a lot of rom-coms that are made about that <laughs> but real life doesn't really work like that all the time you know yeah. and when you put a lot first and then everything else radiates from there then that's the singular path to success in my yes. opinion yes truly thank you for sharing that and yeah and you know one thing that i'm grappling with is like you know you think you really are putting a lot first but you aren't <laughs> like and i think that's what it is it's like I, I have to really be honest we have to be honest with ourselves like yeah. you know like they were just talking about this during the eid khutbah like unfortunately people are and unintentionally worshiping other things like you were worshiping money worshiping the chase worshiping this job or whatever because you could because if anything is like delaying you from doing something that Allah would like that's that's what you're paying attention to you know what I mean and so for me personally even though as much as I I aim to put Allah first and do these things and pray and read the, the you know do whatever I need to do that I think is okay you have to really be mindful of like how are you actually utilizing your mind like what are you doing what are you watching what are you reading what are you eating like all of these things affect your worship and um especially if you're like a lover person like me and and you really you know aim to to marry someone and you want to do all these things and have a family and all that stuff you have to be really careful because like you're always chasing the next bag like if you're not chasing your your university um degree or you're not chasing that the job you chase, like it's like always the next level thing um but the center of everything is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and like coming back to that and so that is a reminder for me like you know what I mean like we, we're literally we're not telling ourselves the truth all the time like we're, we're literally you know we're thinking we're doing something but whole time we're, we're re we could be doing better and Allah is so merciful that you know Allah he's giving us chance after chance after chance to redeem ourselves and like so, you know what I mean and so that's the thing it's like what'd you say I said that is such a blessing that we overlook and i'm so glad you said that alhamdulillah yes yeah. chance after chance you know yeah every day like literally alhamdulillah every day is, is a new moment and mm -hmm. you know like it is it's not something to play with like i think i think that's what why love for me is so deep and like so rooted because like i know that um like not everybody has this moment not everybody is breathing right now mm -hmm. and so the fact that i'm here and like allowed to host this space and allowed to bring in other like-minded people is a blessing and I, and I pray to god that like somebody meets somebody that they really like and they really love and eventually you know they they have this like strong bond whether like i said whether that's a friendship or whether that it turns into a marriage or something like that i really do pray that um but my also my other prayer is that that um, we are mindful of our attachment to things. And, you know, one of the resources that I picked up last year when I was just kind of um, in this one um, situation was this book called Attached. And it talks about the attachment theory and, you know, like different attachment styles that we have. So, and I'm not well versed in this, but 
essentially you could be you know anxiously attached or fearful avoidant avoidant um right. disorganized or um secure and my goal and my aim is to move towards secure attachment um especially because you know all of us with everything that we have and our sociological lenses and the way that we were raised it all dials back to um you know these attachment styles and um you know the the, the last brother that i was getting to know he brought up something to me called not not the brother that goes to me just this other brother <laughs> um, he brought up this theory called the attachment theory and i never heard of it before i was just like oh okay like what is that type of thing it's about this sister name or not sister this lady named mel robbins um and she talks about um the fact that you know if somebody wants to do something just let them like it sounds so simple and so easy, mm -hmm. but it's really not. And it makes you think about your sense of control right. over society, over yourself, over right. others. And, um, you know, not everybody is ready to, to pick up that lane. Like, you know what I mean? To really, to learn and to grow in that way. And that's something that I've been working. Cause like, you really do sometimes like want to hold on so strong you're like well yeah. if you just do if you don't like no, no 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 like just let them do what they gonna do like if they're supposed to be for you they will be for you if if you're okay. supposed to be for them they will be for you know you they'll be for you regardless yeah. i love what some of the folks are saying in the chat um uh, brianna says that there's a repression of our true selves and our purpose that we have to stop doing yeah mm -hmm. obviously you just have to show up as yourself and be confident with that and know and trust that allah has made you this way and that's who you are and embrace that and then samsara says we have to truly recognize if we're gaslighting ourselves yes yeah. because oftentimes we're repeating the the same things that other people are telling us because this has like been drummed into our mind we're conditioned to say these things to ourselves we have to remember the empowerment of yourself is to take control of your narrative I know a lot of people say that like it's a buzz phrase or whatever mm -hmm. but it truly is the reason why BMG fly exists mm -hmm. you empower yourself by owning your own story mm -hmm. the story that you tell yourself about who you are this goes back to what you were saying about what Allah says that you you, Allah is the way that you know Allah. And the story that Allah is telling you about yourself, if you sit still enough and listen to that, then you will find that anchor of who you are. And then you'll begin to tell yourself that. Yep. And then you'll understand that relationship between you and Allah is so important. And that will be the foundation of your life, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's so important when you're going into relationships because once you know yourself and you're confident with who you are and you keep telling yourself the story to yourself that empowers your choices puts you in control of your choices and not the other person like you're not jumping through hoops to please this other person you're jumping through hoops to please Allah right. and so that's the foundation and then you go from there and like that's so important so thank you um Samsara and Brianna like your comments are so spot on mm -hmm. like in everything you were saying Santa, yeah like, so important I know we're running out of time I know like I've had chances where Instagram will cut us off so I don't want to get cut off yeah. <laughs> I try to make it so like we're an hour but inshallah we could do this again like uh, on, on another day um, leading up to it because it's in a month yeah. so tell everybody about it July 19th in Chicago go yeah thank Thank you all so much for being here. I appreciate you so much. So if you go to bring a friend shy on Instagram, you will be able to find us. It's July 19th. It's going to be at the has room. We are going to have an amazing time. Please spread this out to your friends. Whomever is looking, um, and, you know, intentionally and they're Muslim. We'd love to have them in the space. There's very, very limited spots. So um, the tickets just dropped today. And, you know, I do think it's at high demand at this point. So please share as much as you can so that we can get um all the tickets and we will have a wait list once all those original tickets are gone so thank y'all so much alhamdulillah thank you everybody who's in the chat um folks are saying please do it again 
Um, this was dope. Alhamdulillah. Yes. So Vita, maybe we could do it again in two weeks. And yeah, like let's do it. Up to the event. Yes, I love it. Alhamdulillah, because, you know, I definitely want to make sure that we as Black Muslim women are empowering ourselves and owning our narrative and stepping into relationships with, with the power, you know, instead of giving it away. Right? Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Yeah. Inshallah, we'll see you again. And like I said, follow Bring a Friend Shy, um, like Vita was saying. And it is in Chicago, July 19th, the mm -hmm. day before the BM. BMPC, Black Muslim Psychology Conference. Yeah. <laughs> dope, dope. Shout out to Dr. Camila. Mm -hmm. um, but inshallah, <laughs> we'll see you all again on our next live. Follow along here on Black Muslim Girl Fly for more lives. And also follow Bring a Friend Shy and Binta Sings. All right. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. All right, everybody. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you again. Take Bye. care.